Well, nobody knows high school sports the way you do, Larry, so it's an honor to have you as part of our committee. Thank you. For the CBS Ford Nat Moore Trophy. When you first heard about this idea, what was your reaction? Um, way overdue. Uh, I, as a kid, I, <laughs> I, every time I tell Nat that he gets a little bit, but I, we used to watch him. Um, great back, great person. He was always a class guy, and one of the people my dad used to tell me about, because my dad was like kind of a feeder to, you know, he used to leave the sports section out all the time, and I would read about all the high school games when I was younger, and uh, one of them was about like Nat Moore back in the late 60s. We had Craig Curry and Carl Gables, and that's how I started, and uh, I just figured there's not a guy of that era that really deserves something like this, and who has stayed home. Went to Dade Junior College and uh, Dade South, played basketball. He was a National Junior College All-American basketball player before he went to the University of Florida. And that w that's what really makes him special. Florida, Miami Dolphin, lifelong Floridian. Now, he, he exemplifies what, what being staying home and giving back is all about. He used to play his home games at the Orange Bowl? Yeah, yeah, he did. He played them at there. Everybody uh, used to play at Miami High. There was a big Miami High. They played them there, Edison. Uh, all, the, all the surrounding teams, uh, Jackson, Miami Jackson as well. Traz Powell was a good stadium, but they only had regular turf and they would ruin it with New Orleans and Carroll City. But uh, yeah, and what a place to play too, a fabled place like that. And he would later play as a Gator in the Orange Bowl. How would you explain to someone who doesn't quite get it why football is such a part of the culture here? Ooh. Uh, weather, uh, I think whether people want to understand it or not, Miami High is the one that set the tone. Because after the war, you had all these people from Ohio and Wisconsin, and they go, you know what? I'm staying here. This is great weather. So that's what happened. Shenandoah, which is a, a swath that goes from the port of Miami down through Miami High, was the first area. And it just grew from there. People would see the benefits of year-round football and, and back in the 20s. From 1927 to 1953, um, Miami High won 17 mythical national championships. <laughs> no one would play them. Uh, you remember, we didn't have schools down here yet. Uh, and then you had Carl Gables and Jackson and schools like that. But uh, I think it grew to the point where it is you know, in, in Chicago for basketball. Uh, there were 52 schools that made it past the second round in Chicago that were deemed inner city schools in basketball, only five in football. So it shows you that Miami's that area where Every other place in the country is living off of the outskirts in the suburbs, where Dade County and Broward County, some of their best teams are inner city, quote unquote, inner city from Booker T, Washington, the, you know, Carroll City, Northwestern, Central. And it's nowhere like that anywhere else in the country. And I think it grew like that over the years, and it stayed like that. Miami Dade uh, certainly has had this reputation of being a hotbed. Yes. With Broward not far behind, now my sense is, is that it's pretty even. Yeah, Day County still, I mean, you know, they still have those kids, uh, you know, that you just, uh, growing up in the inner city is just something that you just can't take away and take out of those kids. So I think that toughness drives them. Like, you know, people will say, well, I don't remember that kid in high school. Well, it's because he persevered. John Brown, Homestead, who nobody really ever heard of him. Then he gets in the NFL and excels for the Cardinals. And you look and, and, and people trace his Florida City roots and the Homestead and the upbringing. It's all about the upbringing. And that's why Broward will have the numbers, and they've had since Hurricane Andrew, so uh, since 20, what, seven years. It's grown because a lot of the devastated communities in South, you know, in Miami-Dade County, it was too expensive to rebuild because they, you know, they had all these other, you know, so they moved up to Broward, the population, and Palm Beach is in that mode. And, and, and if people want to understand, when they keep talking about Florida not being one of the best places in the country for football, first of all, the coaches don't get paid much. So obviously the coaching somewhere else may be deemed better. Better, but the athletes will never change. We had between Dade Broward and Palm Beach County last on um, September 1st of last year in the NFL, 65 players. Houston was second with 22. Detroit was 17. So it's three times the, the amount. So you go to any high school game on any Friday night, I don't care if it's at Miami Christian or Deerfield Beach or St. Thomas, you're going to see potentially a play on Sunday type kid, which you can't say anywhere else. Wow. So what do you think this award ought to exemplify in Character, because there's a lot of guys that run four fours and four threes, uh, but character, work in the classroom, and then what they do in the football field. Because those, the first two are going to get you doors open to anywhere, Jim. I mean, anywhere. 
But the last one, everybody kind of has. Everybody has that football playing ability. But I think those three things, and that's exactly what Nat has meant uh, as a high school uh, athlete, as a college, and now in the NFL and post-NFL. I mean, so highly regarded by everybody. It, you talk to anybody, it's been in, you know, from the Dan Marinos all the way back to, you know, guys that knew and played with him. I mean, he's revered for a reason. It's those three things, education, character, and the way he played. How tough is it going to be to pick? One guy, one winner. <laughs> How tough is it sometimes to pick the Heisman? You know, there's a lot of guys that go in as a favorite, but you see a, a lot of kids that have attributes. And, you know, because he may have scored 10 touchdowns this year and the other kid five, he had a 4.3 grade point average, and all his teachers, uh, whenever you talk about him, they glow. And that's the difference. I think that's where your winner is going to come overall, not just what he does on the football field. And, and I'm sure Nat would sign off on that in a minute. All right. Well, we thank you for being part of it. Anytime. And, uh, you know, you talked about the different levels. Why has high school football kept you interested all these years? Oh, wow. Uh, I just think the kids appreciate what you do for them. You know, when they get into college and pro, not so much. But uh, I've been fortunate to have covered 11 Hall of Famers in the NFL. And, you know, guys who I could call up. And there's four or five more boiling to go up. And that, to me, is the best thing. When they see you and they acknowledge you and, you know, just doing something, you know, and seeing Mike Irvin, who I've known ever since his days at Piper, whenever he sees me, big hug, you know, how you doing, how you feeling. And that, that makes my job really worthwhile to, to have that happen. Uh, and, you know, when, when you rank a kid and, you know, you hurt some people's feelings and stuff like that, the very fact that I promote every kid, that's, that's the best thing. And then the end result is a Michael Irvin coming up with a big hug or, you know, one of those kids that you've covered and that are doing well in the NFL.